Okay, to be fully honest with you, you know what you need to know about R to get most things done. The rest is just learning particular cases of how to accomplish things. I got a lot left to teach you, but you've covered the biggest basics. You know how to get data into R. You know how to subset and examine that data at the most basic levels. You know how to make that data appear in visualizations. The rest is just more particular pieces, but those are the big core elements of what you need to do. We're going to spend a little bit of time in this video about other ways to examine data once you have it loaded in, just at the summary level, get you a quick idea about what's in there. And we're going to also do a little more on plotting from the perspective of just examining data initially, not creating anything for show yet, just getting something to show you what you have. So. We're going to start up by loading up ggplot2. In general, we're going to like to start our scripts with requiring the packages we're going to need. So got that up in there. Next, we're going to change our working directory to the place where I have the data I'd like to look at. Then we're going to load up into an object called roster, the file jackson underscore ross.csv. And that's going to be the current roster for the Jacksonville Jaguars NFL team. They are not a terrifically good club. And we're going to examine their players. So. One way we can do a quick look at what's in there is the type head. You remember it's going to show us the first six rows of the data. Looks like we have a variety of information about these folks. Got their height, their weight, what school they went to, and a couple other things about them. It's one way to look at it. Another way you can get an idea of the data set you have, and I like this one, is to coerce a data frame into a spring. We mentioned coercion earlier when we were talking about variable types, and this is not maybe going to do what you expect. Let's take a look at how it works. What you get is a list of each column and just an explanation of what's in there. So. You get an explanation of the data frame as a whole as well. We have a 54 by 11 object. Uh, it shows us the first column is an integer variable and gives us the first several values. Second and third, also the fourth columns, are factor variables. And down the line, shows us what we have in there. Really helpful way of just getting a brief look at the classes of data stored within your data frame and a brief explanation of what's in there. Now, we've already looked earlier, of course, at the summary command as well. For the numerical variables, this is a little bit more meaningful than it is for those factor and string variables. All right, so last time we ran qplot, we ran it with the data variable, rather the data parameter set. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Ran it with the x parameter set. You're familiar with that as well. What we're going to leave out here is the y parameter, and this is going to give us a different type of chart. So I'll take a look at that here. And what we get is a histogram. It has the concentrations, uh, rather the counts, the numbers of players at various weights. So something pretty familiar. It shows us the shape of the data. Now if we look at what the summary told us earlier, we would say the average weight here, the mean weight was 242 pounds, the median weight 233 pounds. We take a look at our graphic. Well, that'll put us right sort of in this range over here, but quite obviously the distribution weight's a little bit different than that. We have multiple peaks in this data. We have folks right at the 200 pound mark. A lot of your cornerbacks, wide receivers, a couple of the halfbacks on this team, the quarterback all way in that range. You got another peak here between, oh, right about 230, right about where our median was. And then we have one over 300 pounds where you get your defensive tackles and offensive linesmen. linemen. So to say simply that the mean of the data is this, the median of that value is, is that, is not as descriptive as taking a look at piece of graphing like this. So that's a very basic way to get comfortable with your data sense, what you load them in. And as we move on, we'll get into more complicated ways to analyze the data itself. But whenever you load data in, it's a very good idea to run one or more of these commands just so you know what you're looking at. You can catch if anything's wrong or goofy right off the bat. All right, again, this is Ed from MyBringBack.com. We are cranking out videos teaching you how to make use of R and getting you ready to perform really exciting dynamic data analysis. So stick around. Keep coming back. Travis won't disappoint you.